Hello. OK, so uh, in this talk, I'm going to, um, as you said, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks when you're trying to prepare for the CKA exam, which will make you a certified Kubernetes administrator. And I'm just going to cover these three areas. We're going to go through the curriculum overview. Then we'll get into the nitty gritty of the tips and tricks that work for me and some of the resources that will help you to get through uh, the exam. So first of all, the curriculum overview. As you can see, it's pretty broad. Um, and it covers pretty much the whole of Kubernetes. Now, there's two things to take from this slide. You can uh, decide uh, the percentages of each. Um, uh, and when, you, when you're trying to study, you can kind of take the approach of perhaps I can uh, streamline my study, leave out some sections potentially, and try and kind of just get what you need to pass. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that so much. That's a bit of a dangerous approach. What I would recommend more so is keeping score of, uh, of yourself during the exam, um, because you will run out of time, right? There, there's a situation where you have to make a decision on, in the time left remaining, which questions do I which answer? And uh, to help you with that decision, you might want to take a look at the percentages associated with each question and say, out of the five questions that I've got left to do, I've only got two, time for two. Which two do I pick? Maybe the two with the highest points to help you get over the line. Um, and that line is a score of 74%. So if you're keeping the tally, you, you try and want to make sure that you get 74 or more. 74 will do, but more is better. Um, First tips and tricks, uh, the documentation. First of all, kubernetes.io and the documentation within that URL is available during the exam. So this is amazing. So you've got all of that resource at your fingertips. But what is not so amazing is that if you don't know your way around, you're going to spend a lot of time searching for exactly what you need. So I thoroughly recommend knowing your way around the tasks and the concept section of that documentation. Um, those two areas are key. And they have some beautiful examples of YAMLs and how to run them and when to apply them. And you will definitely be well served by knowing where those two areas are in the documentation. And the third thing about the documentation is get to know kubectl. Um, there's a cheat sheet on that uh, URL as well in kubernetes.io docs. Um, know your way around kubectl cheat sheet. You will spend most of your time running kubectl commands. Um, and so you definitely need to know your way around that. Now, Time is of the essence, so you quickly need to create manifests. So fast manifests, how do I get it? What worked really well for me was, I, as I mentioned before, there's, there's, yeah, there's manifests in the Kubernetes documentation pages. I used to grab, grab a chunk of those, cat them into a YAML file, and then save it, and then edit it from there. So that worked really well for me. Again, going back to know your way around the tasks and concepts, be able to quickly get an example of YAML that you need, uh, and not spend too much time searching and looking around. The other, the other one, second point there, is using a dry run. So that can quickly um, generate you a manifest uh, uh, at, to the point that, that you need. So if you want to create a deployment, you kind of stick the dry run command at the end of the, uh, the kubectl command, and that will get you a sample deployment that you need. And then in, in you go and edit. So speaking of editing, as I say, you're going to run pretty much most of the exam on the command line, running kubectl commands, and editing manifests within your editor. So uh, I use Vim, so it's always a good idea to know, uh, you know your way around your editor and have like, time-saving commands that get you to the top of the page or the bottom of the page or to a certain line, because you will have to edit YAML files quite a lot. And you also, uh, a top tip from me is to make aliases. And don't just go uh, conservative with an alias for kubectl kind of go crazy on the aliases and just make like alias for kubectl get pods, kubectl get deployments, and, and so on and so on. It will save you seconds, but those seconds all add up. OK. So top tip for me, which worked for me, kubectl run dash dash help is an awesome resource. Um, but what is even more awesome is if you grip the output for kubectl itself, and uh, the output is similar to what you see there on the screen, a whole lot of kubectl commands to do uh, various things, which you will be asked to in the exam. And so they give you a sample line straight away, so you don't have to remember commands. OK, and this is my absolute top tip. Um, kubectl run dash dash help again, awesome. Even more awesome if you grep for restart. Um, and the output of that grep restart is uh, on the screen there. So there's three options for uh, when you use kubectl run and you put in restart. It gives you uh, uh, the values are always. 
um, never um, or on failure. And the default, if you don't specify any restart, the default is always, which will generate you a deployment. If, however, you put restart never, like I've put on the screen there, it will generate you a pod. And if you put uh, on failure, it will generate you a job. So from one command line, you get three very different uh, resources within, Kubra, uh, within uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> With a kubectl command, you get three very different resources just from the same command line by just switching one switch restart. Um, and that's, that, that worked really well for me because you will be asked to create resources of a particular name. So creating a, a part of a name like their OP test just from one command line, you might then be asked to create a deployment, same command line, just a different switch for the restart. OK, and some of the resources which were uh, super useful for me when I was helping to study is some uh, stuff from Kubedex there, <coughs> some blogs from Heptio from where I used to work, and there's uh, the Managing Kubernetes book at the bottom there, um, an awesome resource, um, very extensive. OK, so thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>